हेलो व्यूअर्स वेलकम टू द वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन मशीन लर्निंग सेशन इज अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन टू रिग्रेशन लीनियरिटी कॉरिलेशन एंड कॉसेशन सो लेट अस सी ईच ऑफ दीज टर्म्स हियर विद एग्जांपल्स रिग्रेशन एनालिसिस इज अ सुपरवाइज्ड लर्निंग टेक्निक इन मशीन लर्निंग यूज्ड टू प्रेडिक्ट कंटीन्यूअस वैल्यूज लाइक प्राइसेस टेंपरेचर और सेल्स बेस्ड ऑन द इनपुट डेटा since in the introductory chapter you have learned the different types of machine learning algorithms in that you have seen one of the type is regression so regression is used to predict the continuous values based on the training data set the machine can predict the values for the new data it answers questions like what will be the price of a house based on the size what will be the temperature tomorrow based on the current weather how much profit will a company make next month you can use this type of technique in order to predict the values why is it called as regression is the question the term regression comes from statistics it refers to finding the relationship between one or more input variables also called as features or independent variables and on output variable or the dependent variable so it is going to what find the relationship that is existing between what independent variables and dependent variables so real life examples predicting house prices so just one uh, data set i have mentioned here what is given in the data set is size in square feet in the number of bedrooms and price in dollars is mentioned so here you have three data points and now that you want to predict the price of a new house with 1800 square feet and three bedrooms so these are given but you wanted to predict a size of what how much 1800 and it is having three bedrooms so what will be the price so your regression model will analyze the pattern in the given data and try to predict the price using a formula a mathematical equation like a line or curve so types of regression as i said linear regression is there which is using a straight line formula so here in this you can check you can calculate the price now i am just trying to use this data set for the different types of regression linear regression multiple linear regression and polynomial regression so how it is going to work first time suppose if you want to predict the price using the linear regression what is the formula a into size plus b it is simply like y equal to mx plus c so x is your independent variable y is your dependent variable m is the slope and c is the intercept on the y axis so here b is what the intercept on the y axis and a is the slope a value is here and b value is here okay a and b this this is a value and this is b value when you substitute the value of the size you will get the price in multiple linear regression uses more than one feature earlier we were taking only what the size of the house now we are considering even the bedrooms that are there in the house for that we need to know a b and c okay these three coefficients earlier for us only a and b now three polynomial regression if we are using then the equation becomes a into size square plus b into size plus c see in polynomial regression this particular is what an equation of degree 2 so once you substitute the value of size and a b c are the coefficients when you compute the values for the coefficients and substitute the value of the size then you will get to know the price there is one more type of regression called as logistic regression this is a special case why special because despite its name it is used for classification not for predicting continuous values so here this works little differently basically all other regression models are used to predict the continuous values whereas the logistic regression is used for classification now steps in the regression analysis is to collect the data to choose the model train the model make predictions and evaluate performance so collecting data suppose if your task is prediction of the price predicting a price of a house then you are collecting the data okay like prices house sizes etc so many other then choose model will be there whether you want to do it with linear polynomial or multiple linear so decide the model then train the model is feeding the data to the algorithm to find the best fit line or curve make predictions is use the model to predict values for the new inputs finally you need to evaluate the performance so use the metrics like mean squared error in order to check the error so that you can evaluate the performance the applications for regression are predicting stock prices estimating medical cost forecasting sales or profits estimating traffic or weather now let us see the difference between correlation coefficient and regression 
this correlation coefficient is also called as Pearson coefficient. The correlation coefficient shows how strongly two variables are related. There is definitely difference between regression and correlation. Regression is used to predict the continuous values. That is, it is used to find the relationship that is existing between the variables. In, in correlation coefficient, we have to see how strong is the relationship. So, this values for that correlation coefficient are in the range of minus 1 to plus 1. So, plus 1 means it is a positive relationship that is existing. Minus 1 means a perfect negative relationship. So, in positive relationship, if the value of one variable increases, the value of the other variable also increases. And if the value of one variable decreases, the value for the other variable also decreases. Whereas, in negative minus 1, if the correlation coefficient value is minus 1, it is indicating a negative relationship. If the value of one variable increases, the value of the other variable decreases. If the value is 0, means no such relation existing between the values that are getting changed. Here, you should know about the term symmetrical. Correlation between x and y is same as y and x. If you want to find out the correlation coefficient and if I am telling find the correlation coefficient between x and y or I can say between y and x it means the same. Basically what is that you need to check how strong is the relationship and in which direction is the relationship. That was about the correlation. Now regression which I started in the very beginning. So let me just add few more points. A method that shows how one variable affects another and can be used for prediction. Non-symmetricalities. Regression of y on x is different from x on y. Here you can use this equation y equal to ax plus b for the prediction of values. So, if you look at this statement, a method that shows how one variable affects another and can be used for prediction. If the variable is space scale, so definitely the pay scale will be increased if the performance of the employee is excellent. So, one variable performance, okay, this performance variable will affect the another. One variable affects the another variable. So, if the performance is good, the pay scale will be good. If the performance is poor, then the pay scale will be poor. So, this is what we say that there is a relationship existing between these two variables here. In regression, we are just checking whether there is a relationship existing between the variables. Correlation coefficient, we know that there is a relationship existing between the variables, but how strong is the relationship and is it a positive or negative in which is the direction. So, that details we will get from correlation coefficient. Now, there is one more term causation. So, let us see the difference between causation and regression. Previously, you have seen difference between correlation coefficient and regression, now causation. Causation means that one thing directly causes another to happen okay for example if you take cloud cloud will result into what rain so we say there is a cause and relationship existing between these two if there are clouds then it is going to rain another example if you turn on a light switch the light will turn on so the switch causes the light to come on you take the painkiller for a headache and your headache goes away so cause is taking the painkiller and what is the effect the headache will disappear. This is causation. Now, you cannot use the same example for regression. I will tell you if you use the same example for regression, then what is the issue? We have regression. Regression models analyze how changes in one or more numeric input variables affect a numeric output. So, this I have been telling that it is used to predict the continuous values. We want to analyze the relationship that is existing between the variables. Now, the painkiller and headache example is not ideal for regression. Because in the painkiller case, the input is more like, did you take the medicine? So, it is like a categorical, not continuous. You are saying whether you took the medicine or you have not taken the medicine, yes or no. Then the output is what definitely, whether you will get the relief from headache or will you not get the relief from headache, yes or no. So, these are the categorical values. That is why you cannot take this example for regression. These are categorical values, not continuous numbers. This is what I have written. So, regression is best for things like number of hours studied, exam score. Yeah, definitely for this, you can make use of the regression model. Number of hours studied, if a student studied for more number of hours, then the examination score will be high. If the temperature increases, the sales of ice creams also increases. If the years of experience of an employee are more, then the salary will also be more. 
these are the different examples that can be used for regression causation requires controlled experiments just because someone took a tablet and felt better does not mean that medicine alone caused it unless tested under controlled conditions so now the painkiller or headache can work for regression just now i said that the painkiller and headache example cannot be used for regression but suppose if i want to use for regression that time i can make use of the continuous values so here what i have done is okay for the tablet whatever you are taking to get relief if the dosage is 100 mg then the time to get relief from pain is 60 minutes if the dosage is 200 mg the time to get relief from pain is 45 is 300 mg then the time to get relief from pain is 30 mg this is just an example to show that if you really want to take that an example for regression then you have to make those values as continuous but still i have written here but still i don't prefer taking this example because it's not that if you keep increasing the dosage here your time to get relief from the pain will also get reduced so it doesn't mean that a person will take uh, some thousand mg tablet and expect that there will be a relief from pain in five minutes so that is not possible here we have what definitely a limit for the medicine to be taken so test as i said clinical trials okay only then you are going to make use of those medicines i wanted to show that if you take examples of this kind for regression it's not going to work in reality One more example you take like this too. there are three different attributes temperature ice creams and drowning cases but the values that are written under each of these are categorical high temperature high ice cream sales high drowning cases low temperature low ice cream sales and low drowning cases now how to interpret this data see first we'll see regression regression will show a positive relationship between sales and drowning when we see the data we interpret immediately like this if the ice cream sales are high then it is going to result in more number of drowning cases but does ice cream cause drowning no why uh, one more attribute called temperature so the hidden cause is the temperature the hot weather leads to actually more swimming and sadly more drownings actually the temperature the high temperature is making what people to go for swimming and sadly more number of drowning cases are happening at the same time high temperature will also increase the ice cream sales so Finally, the conclusion is correlation or regression is not equal to causation. Causation you can write like this, x causes y, but in regression x and y are related. Now we have different types of regression methods, linear regression, non-linear regression and logical regression. These three are the main categories. Then under linear you have single linear regression, multiple linear regression. And under non-linear regression, you have the polynomial regression. So in all my future sessions, you will be learning in detail. Time being, you can just know the main differences between this. Linear regression is a type of regression where a line is fitted upon given data for finding the linear relationship between one independent variable and one dependent variable. Single linear regression or you can call it a simple linear regression also. It is used to find the linear relationship linear relationship that exists between one independent variable and one dependent variable multiple regression here we need to find the linear relationship between two or more independent variables and one dependent variable we have polynomial regression it is a type of non-linear regression method where we describe the relationship among variables where nth degree polynomial is used to model the relationship between one independent variable and one dependent variable polynomial multiple regression is also there so that is used to model two or more independent variables and one dependent variable logical regression or logistic regression is used for predicting categorical variables that involve one or more independent variables and one dependent variable so this is working slightly different it's used to predict categorical values not the continuous values though it comes under the label regression but still this works for only categorical values now what are the limitations of the regression first one is outliers outliers are what these are the abnormal data when you have okay the data when you are taking suppose for example mean of some numbers and your numbers are 2 3 5 then there is one number 90 when you are taking the average what is that you are observing there is one number which is completely 
different from all the other numbers so the value is also becoming a little different because of this 90 so these type of data which are not normal we call that as outlier so number of cases what do you mean by number of cases the ratio of independent and dependent variables should be at least 20 is to 1 for every explanatory variable there should be at least 20 samples at least 5 samples are required in extreme cases so here number of cases is simply like the number of the data points that are there in your data set what actually we we are saying is the ratio of independent and dependent variables should be at least 20 is to 1 then we have the missing data missing data in training data can make the model definitely unfit for the sample data then there is one more term written here multicollinearity multicollinearity it refers to a situation in a regression analysis where two or more independent variables are highly correlated with each other this high correlation makes it difficult to determine the individual effect of each independent variable on the dependent variable for example you take independent variables like uh, the number of experience of an employee number of years the employees working in a company and the performance and these dependent variable you can take the salary or the pay here we see that the the salary is a dependent variable the salary of an employee is what depending on the experience and the performance if both these variables experience and performance are having a high correlation coefficient like 1 and 0.9 then we are not able to figure out actually which variable is having more effect on the dependent variable this is all about the regression linearity correlation and causation i explain these terms with examples and hope you find this session helpful please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you bye bye and take care